Hello everybody and uh, welcome to story number three. Uh, it's been a week like no other for me, I have to say. Um, I've been hearing from people from, an ex people from London who, who just said how uh, strangely comforting it was to, to hear the Irish accent. Um, uh, uh, actually a girl, a friend of mine in India who clearly didn't find it comforting at all and uh, won't be subscribing anytime soon because she just couldn't she couldn't catch the accent but uh, there's a there's a guy in the United States and thankfully he must be able to understand at least most of it because he's uh, he's actually considering showing this to his cell group and then posing questions and then they discuss whether or not I'm a complete nutcase or not <laughs> I don't know what they're going to conclude, but anyway, look, people are using this, folks, whatever way they see fit. And for me, that is, that's just totally what I want. And I'm delighted with that. So I'm sure you're hearing a lot at the minute, you know, people are saying, is this our new norm? This strange time that we're in in the world that we all get the privilege of living through. Is this our new normal? And I'm starting to think, you know, wouldn't it be great if we as Christians could adopt that and be thinking to ourselves, yes, this whole way of hearing from God and responding to God that I am hopefully trying to get across here could be the new norm. This could absolutely be the new norm. This life of asking God that he would speak to us in dreams, speak to us through other people, speak to us whatever way he wants to speak folks that that could be our new norm and that we would then respond yes there's times whenever like story number one we're going to mess up but then there's going to be times whenever we think oh like story number two that's not what i imagined but actually god i think that's what you're wanting me to do so yes i'll i'll be brave and i will say yes because i think it's what you are saying and you're wanting so folks, once we start into that, we enter into a much more exciting Christian walk, let me tell you. Story number three. And I have permission to share this and photos at the end, hopefully as well. And you'll see why I'm dressed up a little bit more today in a, in a nice kurta, a swankier one than, than the one before, which was an everyday one. I'm going to call this one uh, the uninvited wedding guests and in a sense they really really were uninvited. So this relates to story two and my time first time in India. So not only did God invite me to get to know that older couple but I also get introduced very very quickly uh, whenever I after I arrived to an Indian girl who everybody called Miss Suki. Now, some of you will know that I was teaching geography in the high school in Enniskillen, as it was known then, and now Devonish College. But I wasn't teaching geography in that school, actually. They didn't need a geography teacher. They needed a teacher in the younger school, the, the primary sector. But very quickly, I got introduced to a girl, Miss Soki, who was teaching in the high school. And it turned out... She was also their geography teacher. Now, folks, you know the way sometimes you just click with somebody. You just totally get on. Her and I were like two peas in the same pod. She actually said to me as I was leaving that I was like the sister she never had. We got on at so many different levels. She has an outrageous laugh. Probably every bit as bad as mine, I have to say. And we laughed and we laughed and we laughed. But she also had a faith that was real. And we talked about deep things together. And that was terribly important for me out there. And indeed has been since then. She introduced me to her friends who were similar age to me. She even took me to her church, which I loved. And which I then went to for the rest of my time there. It was not traditional. It was held in the bazaar. It was just a pub and we cleaned it in the morning and, and held worship in there. It was like nothing I'd ever been to before. Hindus were converting to Christianity and sharing about, oh, my real personal persecutions. It was, it was like way out there for me. 
So folks, I had the most amazing time during that summer with this girl. And then roll on many years and she gets married, she emigrates to the United States. She has a little girl. I'm then getting married and I have friends now dotted all over the world who I don't invite to the wedding because I think it's just too big an ask. Some of them like New Zealand, South Africa, Canada, you name it. They're, they're spread all over the world. She was in that category. One salary coming into the home at the time. And I just thought, no way, I'm not inviting her. But we were Skyping on the run up to the wedding. And she said to me, oh, Barb said I would love to come to your wedding. And I'm thinking, I'd love you to come to my wedding too. <laughs> but like, what's the chance? So she said, look, we're praying about it. And we have said, if God wants us to be there, we'll be there. And I thought, wow. And she said, we, we know our budget and we've given that to God. And if he wants to give us a rest somehow, then we're open to that. So I thought, wow, what a way to do it. Great. You never know. And folks, about 10 days later, a very, very excited girl let me know that I think it was her husband's aunt had been in touch and she had like oodles of air miles or whatever and uh, couldn't use them, but would they have any use for them? And of course, they snapped at the chance and all three of them we're at our wedding, uninvited. What do you think of that one? Now, Steph, if you're watching, you get crashed my wedding. <laughs> what God can do, hey?